In this video, we're going to take a look at what we can do after the Database Configuration Assistant has completed its work. So in the previous video, we ran the Database Configuration Assistant, we put in a whole bunch of information of what we wanted our database to look like, and we let it go ahead and do its magic. Uh, it's gone out there and it's given us successful uh, completion of the Oracle database. So we can now hop into something like the Enterprise Manager. So I'm going to paste in, and this URL is provided at the end of the Database Configuration Assistant. Because I selected for my sandbox database that I wanted the Enterprise Manager, manager configured, uh, it gives me a URL at the very end. So I just cut and pasted this. So I'm going to log into uh, the Enterprise Manager right now. We'll take a look at some of the things that we can see there. So I'm going to log in with the password that I provided when I was creating the database. And anytime you connect a sys, you want to log in a sysdba. If everything is working now with my database, I should see a screen uh, inside my browser that has uh, a whole bunch of different things that we can do inside the Oracle database. So here's an example of the database control for the Enterprise Manager 11G. And you can see that my database is up. Uh, I can refresh and get information about how hard my CPU is working, different active sessions that are out there, uh, SQL response time. There's nothing going on in the database. It's just kind of sitting there. But I can keep refreshing and get different pieces of information for uh, my, how my database is working. I have links here for my host, my listener. I can see all the different properties that are out there. Anything that's uh, a link, you can drill down and see how um, hard your Oracle database is working. One of the really nice things is that it'll monitor the alert log for you. It'll show you any Oracle errors that are inside the alert log, uh, give you uh, an opportunity to see how big your database is, if it's available. There's a whole bunch of other links along the top of the screen here. Performance. I have a whole bunch of performance metrics uh, that are out there. I can change these metrics around. I can monitor my database. I can set up automatic alerts so that if something happens in my database, the performance drops below a certain level, it can shoot me an email. I can look at the different schemas, the different users that are out there, look at their tables, index, all the different database objects uh, that are out there, data movement. Uh, I can see how um, uh, things are moving around inside my database. Tremendous amount of information that's available to you through the Enterprise Manager. Again, I sound like a broken record. Don't rely on the graphical tools to do all of your database maintenance. A lot of junior DBAs do that, and then they find themselves uh, unable to access the Enterprise Manager console for whatever reason, and they're kind of stuck. So uh, as much as it's wonderful that Oracle provides you with all these graphical tools to do things, you really have to understand what's going on underneath the scenes if you're going to be a good DBA. So that gives you an example of the Enterprise Manager. Another way you can connect to your database is through the command line. So I'm going to open up a, uh, a DOS window here. Uh, if I were to uh, use the command line to connect to my database, if I was under Unix or Linux, I'd have to use something called the export command. And the export command just allows me to set an environment variable. So I'm going to have to set which environment variable, uh, the Oracle SID, uh, system identifier environment variable, to say, OK, this is the database I want to connect to. So in this example, it's called Sandbox. I'm obviously going to get an error here because I'm in DOS and it doesn't understand what export is. In DOS, the command is just set. And Oracle is not, um, I'm sorry, uh, DOS is not case sensitive. So I can do Oracle SID in uppercase or lowercase. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it does matter in Linux or Unix. You want it all to be in uppercase. It doesn't matter inside of um, Windows. So once I set that, if I want to see all my environment variables that I've been set, I just uh, issue the set command without passing anything. And you can see there's my Oracle SID, and it's at the sandbox. So I'm going to scroll up here, and I can do a SQL plus, and I connect as sysdba. And if I'm logged in as the user who uh, installed all the Oracle software, it will give me the ability to connect there. And you can see I can do something like select instance name from v dollar instance whoops if I spell it right and you can see there's my sandbox so there's a bunch of different ways that you can connect and look at the things in, inside your Oracle database one last thing that I want to point out is uh, if you remember when we were working with the database configuration assistant in the previous video uh, we said that we want to save the scripts that will create our uh, Oracle database and you can see Oracle has gone ahead and it's done that for us. Here's my init.ora file. 
that Oracle used. Here's some of the other things, uh, the other scripts that Oracle used to actually create my database. I encourage you, if you're using the database configuration assistant to create your databases, to definitely generate those files and then just read through the files so you understand what's going on. You can also save those files as a template. Again, if you have to recreate a database for an emergency and you don't have access to the database configuration assistant, you can use those data. F uh, you can use these SQL files as uh, a way of uh, uh, as using it as a template, so that you can go ahead and uh, create your database relatively easily. Hope this video, these videos were informative for you for creating a new database using the database configuration assistant. We're going to look at some of the advanced features of the Oracle database in some upcoming videos.